Good evening, I'm Byron Scott with a CTV News update. Topic the news tonight, we now know who will replace Derek Davis on Prince George's County Council. County, vote, County Council voted unanimously to appoint Jonathan Medlock to the vacant District 6 seat. Medlock, who was the mayor of District Heights, was one of nine people who addressed council last Tuesday at an informational session. This is some of what he had to say. I will hit the ground running. I will make sure that District 6 budget priorities are advanced forward in fiscal year's 2023 budget, which will be front and center for upcoming council members, especially investing in our infrastructure. Medlock will have to step down from his position as mayor. He'll be sworn in next Monday. Well, the U.S. Supreme Court could be on the verge of striking down the landmark Roe v. Wade ruling. A draft opinion on overturning that case that established the right to abortion was leaked to Politico, and now both sides of the issue are up in arms. The Supreme Court confirmed the authenticity of the leaked opinion, but says the draft is not final. Chief Justice Ron Roberts called the leak a betrayal and ordered an inquiry. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell blamed what he called the radical left. Last night, a shocking shocking new breach. Somebody, likely somebody inside the court itself, leaked a confidential internal draft to the press, almost certainly in an effort to stir up an inappropriate pressure campaign to sway an outcome. The White House released a statement saying that if the court does overturn the decision, it will fall on our nation's elected officials and voters to protect a woman's right to choose. A Supreme Court abortion ruling is due this summer. Meantime, Maryland gubernatorial hopefuls are weighing in as the future of abortion rights hangs in the balance. Westmore issued a statement calling the pending decision dangerous and disturbing. If elected, Moore vows to defend Marylanders' rights to access safe and legal abortions. Meantime, gubernatorial candidate Doug Antler says he will help women from other states come to Maryland to receive abortion services. Well, police charge a suspect in connection with a fatal stabbing in Oxon Hill. Investigators say Norman Bethea of D.C. stabbed 28-year-old Stephen Davis of Oxon Hill after a fight between the two on a metro bus. It happened last Friday on the 1100 block of Southview Drive. Bethea is charged with second-degree murder. And here are the latest COVID-19 numbers for our area. The Maryland Department of Health has confirmed 1,006 new cases. The positivity rate in Prince George's County is up slightly to 5.73 percent. 15 Marylanders have died of COVID over the past 24 hours and 219 people are in the hospital. And you're watching CTV News. I'm Byron Scott. Back in just a bit. Stay tuned. To Sofia and Gabriel, Miss Flores, my little flowers. Even though these old knees can't follow on your adventure to the forest today, these flowers represent my love. So you can take me with you wherever you go, near or far. These stitches and threads join us together. Me, your mother, and both of you. And wherever you see a flower, a bird, a beautiful tree, know that my love is with you as you bring our colorful stories to the world. Make the forest part of your story at a park near you. Find one at discovertheforest.org. Are you in the market to purchase your first home? Prince George's County has a countywide program to assist eligible first time home buyers with down payment and closing costs. With the Pathway to Purchase Home Buyer Assistance Program, first time home buyers can select from new construction or resale homes anywhere in the county. You must be able to qualify for a first mortgage and use approved Pathway to Purchase lenders to purchase a property. As long as you live in the house for 10 years, the pathway to purchase 0% loan is forgiven, providing you with additional equity in your property and moving you toward your home ownership goal. For more information, visit redevelopment.mypgc.us. Again, that's redevelopment.mypgc.us.
Welcome back. An update now on a police involved shooting in Greenbelt. Authorities say two Greenbelt officers shot a man they say charged them with a knife. Police had been called to the area on the report of a suicidal person. It happened on the unit block of Plateau Place at around 10.30 yesterday morning. The man was taken to the hospital and is in stable, non-critical condition. The investigation into what sparked the incident continues. And police continue their search for a missing man. His name is Kevin Thomas. He is 40 years old. And Thomas was last seen Sunday at around 3 o'clock in the morning, leaving Doctors Hospital in Lanham while wearing a hospital gown. He is 5 feet 11 inches tall and weighs about 225 pounds. Anyone with information is urged to call 301 390 2160. Maryland expands multilingual access to services with support with a new 211 help call line. The new partnership between the Office of Immigrant Affairs and 211 Maryland also includes the reporting of hate crimes and finding resources for victims. The Hogan administration says the effort was initiated as a result of his Asian American Hate Crimes Work Group. The new service coincides with legislation sponsored by Delegate Jocelyn Pena Melnick that created the Office of Immigrant Affairs. Her bill required a toll-free number for immigrants to call about issues, but the lawmaker says she's happy with the 211 service. And it's an, uh, you know, an alternative um, channel, a one-stop place for people to call and to be able to reach someone that speak their language. And if someone can speak the language and tell them what resources we have in our state, what programs we have to assist people whether it's reporting a hate crime or whether it's finding um, counseling or maybe it's finding problem to assist in paying for housing or maybe it's how to apply for Medicaid or how to contact the Department of Labor and employment issue. It's great to have it all in one place and to make it easy and accessible for people in their language. Again, to access the multilingual service dial 211. Well, summer is right around the corner, and despite skyrocketing gas prices and COVID-19, many Americans are still going on vacation. A poll by AAA found that 70% of residents across 12 states, including Maryland, are planning to travel. The Auto Club says about 60% say they're going on at least one trip, more than 40% saying they're planning multiple trips. Much like we saw last year, there's certainly a lot of pent-up demand, and people are really wanting to travel, they have the desire to travel, and most indicated that they were taking their, if not their first summer trip since COVID-19. Uh, in many cases, that was the case, but in other cases, many also said 50% uh, of Washington, D.C. residents and 40% of Maryland residents indicated that they would be certainly traveling more than they did last summer. For more information, visit the website on your screen. And still ahead on the news, the Rashawn Baker for Governor campaign takes to the airwaves. That story after the break. My Shiro doesn't always wear a cape, but she always has time for a hug, a smile, for going the extra mile. My Shiro stretches every dollar, puts in long hours, puts others first. But now it's your time, Mom. When you're ready to retire, we want you to be able to enjoy it. It's time to start saving now. A free three-minute online chat can give you the personalized tips you need to start boosting your retirement savings today. Visit aceyourretirement.org slash Shiro. One in 365 African Americans battle sickle cell disease. I was one of them. A blood stem cell transplant from a perfectly matched donor saved my life. Many patients are waiting to find their match. They need more black donors to join the Be The Match registry. Learn more about becoming a donor and access free patient resources by visiting endsicklecell.org today. You or someone you know could be the cure. You're not too cool for me. And in return, I reciprocate that sentiment. I'll never be too cool for you. I was a man with a plan, but now I'm a dad with a decree and you can't take that from me. Please let it be noted that I told my job they can dock my pay. Right now it's just too important to take you to school every day. I want to be legendary for you. I want you to puff out your chest when you go to school the same way I do. I walk taller because of you, because I found everything to live for. Welcome back. A Democratic gubernatorial candidate launches his first television ad today. But Sharon Baker's campaign released a 30-second TV spot this morning. In the ad, Baker says he wants to focus on decreasing crime in Baltimore. He claims that elected officials don't care that black men have died in the city at an alarming rate. 
I'm Rashern Baker, and as governor, I'll declare a crisis, move my office to Baltimore, and fight like hell to fix it. Tackle the root causes of crime, like poverty. Fix vacant buildings and hire more police who are part of the community. Baker is one of nine Democrats seeking to win the primary, which is set for July 19th. Well, the city of Mount Rainier has its new has a new lawmaker. Valerie Woodall was sworn in last night as council member for Ward 2. Normally, the city holds municipal elections during May in odd numbered years. But due to the resignation of a council member and a charter change, a special election was held at the end of April. Woodall's work experience includes community development. For the past few years, she has worked with the Mount Rainier Elementary Grounds Committee. Well, Maryland gets its first round of federal infrastructure funding to restore the Chesapeake Bay. The state will get more than $3 million in funding, most of which will go to farmers to improve local waterways that run into the bay. The Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act includes $238 million over the next five years to support bay restoration projects in six, in six watershed states and D.C. Let's get a quick look now at our weather forecast for the next couple of days. Tonight, scattered showers and thunderstorms with a low around 57 degrees. Tomorrow, more showers and thunderstorms likely throughout the day with a high near 80. Thursday, mostly cloudy with a high near 70. And Friday, showers likely in the afternoon with a high near 70. And now for the community calendar, grab a bag of gourmet popcorn and your loved one for a movie on the Potomac. Make every Thursday evening a date night at the National Harbor. Don't forget a comfortable blanket or chair to set up on the plaza in front of the big screen. The feature film begins at 7 o'clock. More information, visit nationalharbor.com. And that's our news for tonight. I'm Byron Scott. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night. sports then you should know about stem because maximizing nutrition analyzing peak muscle performance calculating the perfect shot and more are all made possible by science technology engineering and math in fact there are more careers than ever in sports science so if you have a passion for sports then think about getting involved in stem and improve everyone's game on and off the field get inspired at shecanstem.com People do some pretty cool things in their 40s and 50s. Why should saving for retirement be any different? I mean, they go back to college, learn new instruments, start skateboarding. Okay, maybe that one's not for everybody, but saving for retirement is. With aceyourretirement.org, you can get on track with your retirement savings no matter your age. Just have a three-minute chat with Avo, the friendly digital retirement coach from AARP. You'll get personalized recommendations based on your input that are easy to understand and work with your lifestyle. It's quick, easy, and free. Plus, it's sponsored by AARP, so you know they got your back. Snarly move, Dad. Thanks, sweetie. So wherever you are in your retirement savings journey, head to aceyourretirement.org and start chatting with Avo today. That's aceyourretirement.org.